Hey there, I thought I'd do a quick reading and um, honestly the first little section of chapter one kind of works um, to introduce the novel um, but also kind of give you the sense of the character and language and that kind of stuff. So uh, chapter one is called Leukemia um, and it, it is based on a true story um, which I, I'll tell a little bit afterwards I guess. Um, anyway, it begins. A moment like this was rare for Esther. It was unusual to find herself without something to say, some nugget to offer, or some meaty gossip picked up on her rounds. But when confronted by someone to offer a solicited opinion, she would just as soon make something up as admit failure. The very idea that Esther, the fount of all knowledge in the city of Apul, keeper of wisdom, holder of stories, collector of facts, mobile news organization, might not know about something before anyone else did, terrified her to the point of fact creation rather than acknowledging that someone had scooped her or beat her to the punch. Esther dealt entirely in local news. She covered the stories that the local paper, the Apool Record, didn't touch. To some, this was gossip. To others, someone else's business. But to Esther, it was a currency that she peddled around town to anyone who would listen and some who wouldn't. Her reputation was built on being there first, knowing things before they were public knowledge, and by her almost omnipresence. She power walked everywhere, but even given the ground she covered by foot, the houses she entered with and without permission, and the countless people she interviewed or eavesdropped on, there was the odd time when Esther wasn't in the know. In a moment like that, indeed, a moment like right now, when she was being asked a direct question, she was at the top of her game. Because she had so many pieces of information at her disposal and knew so many nuggets about this family or that, she was often able to assemble a hunch that turned out to be true. When someone asked her, is everything all right with Chris and Debbie? Esther was able to see quite clearly in a way that she hadn't before because she hadn't been under the pressure to do so, that no, things weren't all right with Chris and Debbie. In fact, Esther could see clearly now that Debbie and Chris were both having affairs, and she tugged at this memory and that and put together a convincing string of cause and effect that led her to the foregone conclusion. This all transpired in a matter of seconds before the questioner would wonder if Esther had forgotten the question, and when it came out of Esther's mouth, it was now indeed fact. The questioner would then spread that information to another friend because the questioner had long suspected something was going on with Chris and Debbie anyway and just needed someone or something to confirm it. Afterward, it was difficult to know if Esther had somehow inadvertently stumbled upon the truth or if the very spreading of the rumor throughout the town caused Chris and Debbie to distrust one another, pushing them into one another, into the comforting arms of another. Either way, Esther took credit for her truth finding. Today's question was a simpler one. The questioner, one of Esther's few actual friends, Victoria Webster, was folding laundry when Esther barged into her house. Some neighbors saw Esther's intrusions as impositions, but since Vicky was a friend, Vicky didn't mind at all. At least, that's what she said to Esther. Vicky folded her son's pants and casually said, Barry said David wasn't at school today. Did you hear anything? In truth, Esther had not. Some might think that such a question wasn't worthy of the great Esther's vat of knowledge. This was, after all, just a child who had missed a single day of school. But since Vicky was a friend, Esther felt extra pressure to know this answer. Her mind started to wheel. What had she heard about the McKinneys? Well, for one, after ten years of not having another child after their son David was born, they suddenly had another child. This could just be happenstance, bad luck, or maybe they hadn't been trying. Maybe the second child was an oops, or maybe, maybe David had been the oops, and the last ten years had been restraint while they adjusted to being parents and determining if they wanted any more. Maybe after testing the waters of having a child, they finally came to the conclusion that they had this parenting thing down, and they could handle another one. But that wouldn't explain the absence at school. That second child, who Esther could not remember the name of, was right on the tip of her tongue, was just over a year old now. There would be no reason for David to stay home with his little brother. What was his name? 
There was something she had heard in the news recently about children. She looked at Vicky folding her laundry and knew that she was taking longer than usual to come up with an answer. There was an easy way out. She could just say three simple words, but to her, those words were terrible. They meant defeat. She simply couldn't say, I don't know. So instead, she said, he, long pause, has leukemia. A shorter pause. It's terrible, actually. But little Russell has leukemia. They're trying that new treatment they were just talking about on the news. Something about a refined protocol. Even though it's terrible, the recovery rates in children, particularly as young as Russell, are very high. Upwards of 70% or better. The McKinney's took him in today, and David went with them. So that's how it starts. Um, and the true story of the leukemia is actually... Um, I wasn't at school one day and my friend was asked what happened to me and his response was that my brother had leukemia um, and my family received these random calls and letters of concern and the truth was we had taken a trip to Florida. Um, it was one of the few family trips that we had taken and um, it was kind of a, a shocking surprise to come back to an outpouring of support for something that wasn't true. <laughs> um, anyway, that's kind of how a bunch of the stories work is I just kind of mined stories from my childhood and, um, and things I remember hearing and tweak them and, and some stuff are just made up whole cloth as well. But anyway, thanks for listening.